Lucy has been pretty missing in action for a while now. She did one on-camera interview where she refused to show her face. That was a huge red flag to many of us. Her friend was missing at that point, and she was worried about hiding her identity. What was she really hiding from? Did someone tell Lucy that she shouldn't show her face on camera? Apparently Lucy didn't waste any time getting back to her festivals and went to her next one just shortly after Jay was found. It's also being said that Lucy went to Italy because she posted pictures about two weeks ago on Instagram, but then deleted them quickly afterwards. It's like she is trying to lie low until things die down. Same with Brad, he hardly ever posts on Instagram anymore and only has one picture of himself and Jay. Lucy had been quiet on Instagram until yesterday when she posted this on her story. It seems this might be her way to hit back at the haters. It reads, when you study human psychology, you'll realize a lot of people's behaviors are projections of how they feel inside. Haters want to be the people they talk about. Miserable people hate their own lives. Angry people want validation and love. Once you understand this, it will become a lot easier to navigate through life. A lot of people are at war with themselves, not you. After reading this on Lucy's Insta story, a lot of people felt it was her way of hitting back at the haters. She is obviously on social media, and see everything being said about her. I mean Facebook alone is full of conspiracy theories, and Lucy's name is thrown around a lot. Moving on to an update that came in from British investigator Mark Williams Thomas. He is back after a break from social media. He says that he will reveal information when the time is right. He needs to be very careful and doesn't want to traumatize the family any further, so he would work closely with Debbie and her family in order to reveal this information. Take a listen. Break. And one of the questions that I got asked lots and lots through direct messaging, because my direct messages are open, was an update in relation to Jay Slater. I went out, did the investigation, worked very closely with the family, and as a result of that, got a lot of information, but also a lot of information from potential witnesses, people involved, people who knew Jay, and also from the authorities in a roundabout way. They weren't directly talking to me, but I was in contact with people who were in contact with the authorities. And one of the things that's very clear is, of course, there's a huge amount of misinformation. I've been back and looked through some of the videos that I took. So when I went out there, I took a lot of videos in relation to my investigation, but also thought processes of whilst that investigation was going on. And one of the interesting aspects of it is, as is always the case for every investigation, is you find information out uh, and you look at that. And then a couple of days later, that information changes or it's evidenced in some way. And it's quite interesting. Some of the information that came to me in the very early days wasn't accurate, wasn't correct, and I needed to validate. And I was in a unique position because I, of course, had access to the family, had access to mobile phone records, I had access to friends. And in fact, all of the friends communicated with me. There wasn't a single friend who stepped away and didn't want to communicate. And they all had their own story to tell. And obviously they all had concerns, some of them, because of what they were up to and their involvement. But they all participated. They all engaged with me, even to the point of the two males who went back with Jay to their apartment. You know, one of them was in real contact with me. I was talking to him. He was providing me a lot of information. The only person I didn't get to speak to was the other male that was with him. But everybody else that I needed to speak to, I did speak to. So where's this going? Well, I've spoken in the last few days to Debbie. She had a long conversation with me. Very pleasant. We got on very well. There's no issue with that at all. And in fact, she really struggled during this period of time. And rightly so. You know, she's a mother who's lost a child. And not just that, but was in the eye of the media storm. This was, this was an inquiry uh, uh, case that hit the headlines, not just in the UK, but actually worldwide. People became fascinated and it took on a life of its own. And as a result of that, lots of conspiracy theories, lots of people with their own views in terms of what happened. But I had the uniqueness because I was literally in the heart of it, able to establish information from different parties, collect that information and then look to see what evidential value it had. I was very clear from day one that this looked like a tragic accident. But of course, I needed to investigate it and I remained open minded throughout the whole of that investigation and was very clear that actually, whilst there were considerable issues that existed and I haven't revealed the details of all those issues and exactly, you know, kind of why, why Jay left in the manner he did why I didn't want to return. You know, those things I've kept to myself at this present moment in time. And maybe when the time is right, I will reveal those. I've got to be very careful. What I don't want to do is upset the family any more trauma than they've already had. 
And so it would be something that I would work very closely with Debbie and the family to reveal that information. Uh, and maybe the time will be right soon to be able to do that, but not right now. So I hope you respect me in relation to that.